Hello everybody, what's going on? I'm Gav from Mastermind 74 back again today doing another Valve Source Code tutorial, well an alternative tutorial today. It's an alternative to one that I did back in 2021 where I outlined how to be in a position to compile shaders, where you need to acquire Perl and the DirectX SDK, an old version of it. And at, even at that time there was an alternative method which was to use SL555's version of the shader compile tool, which has its own advantages and also some disadvantages that I'll get to. Um, so first and foremost, I have to give a big ups, shout out and thank you to SL555 for making this possible. So some advantages include this being a much simpler setup than the original tutorial that I did. And I think it even uses more CPU cores to compile the shaders which means it's a faster compilation process. The disadvantages, however, I'll get to later. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is head over to SL555's GitHub page, which I'll link in the description down below, and it should take you to the latest release of the Shader Compile tool that they have made. And you just want to download the shadercompile.7z file, um, you can also download the shadercompile.exe file if you want to, however you don't have to do it because this exe file is included within the .7z file and to be able to extract the .7z file you need an application called 7zip, you can google search for that, download it, it's a very simple process and in my case the latest release was version 235 so it might stand to reason that at some point in the future this number is going to be different than what I showcase in the video. It's just the latest release version that you want to download and it's the, the .7z file. Um, so then what you want to do is extract the .7z file to gain access to three critical folders, the bin folder, the std shaders folder and a headers folder. So what you want to do is you want to copy the bin folder into your source code dev tools folder and that's where the shader compile.exe application is located. Then you want to copy the std shaders folder into your source mods material system folder and allow for the overwriting of any files that may happen in the process. And inside of the headers folder there's actually a folder called VS2013 and inside of that folder is a file called cshader.h. So if you're using a version of Visual Studio which is newer than Visual Studio 2013, which I'm sure everybody who's watching this video is, you're doing that, then you want to take the cshader.h file inside of the VS2013 folder and copy and paste it into your source code's public shaderlib folder. And if for whatever reason you're using a version of Visual Studio that is not older than Visual Studio 2013, for whatever reason that might be, you just want to copy the cshader.h file that is not in the VS2013 folder and again copy paste that into the src public shaderlib folder. And as I mentioned earlier, if you did download the shadercompile.exe executable file, then that needs to go into your sorts mods devs tools bin folder. However, you don't actually need to do that because, as I mentioned earlier, that exe file is already contained within the bin folder and I guess I didn't know that when I did the filming for this video. So what you want to do after this is go to your source code's material system and std shaders folder and you need to either edit uh, the build hl2 shaders.bat file, the build episodic shaders.bat file or the build hl2 mp shaders.bat file dependent on the situation for your mod. And what you need to do is change the game DIR and the STK bin DIR paths to point to your mod and the Source 2013 single player or multiplayer install directory respectively. Now one thing to keep in mind is that these paths do need to adhere to the 8.3 directory format and if you don't know what that means you'll probably see something in the video right now that outlines what it is. It's basically a short file path with tilders and stuff like that in it. Um, it's kind of an old, outdated, antiquated kind of file path system, but it's needed for this shader compile stuff. Now one thing I didn't know when I did the original video back in 2021, where I outlined how to use Perl and the DirectX DK and all that stuff, is that this 8.3 file directory format is only enabled on the C drive by default, however you can actually enable this directory format on other drives. 
So what you would need to do is load up a command prompt as an administrator and simply do the command fsutil 8.3name set then the drive or I think even the path to your mod folder or the source 2013 single player or multiplayer install folder and then zero. And what this does is it sets that directory, that drive to have the 8.3 directory format. Now, one thing to keep in mind by doing this is that it doesn't actually make retroactive changes, which means you may need to copy and paste the source 2013 single player or multiplayer folder out and then back into where it was originally at. And the same thing for your source mod as well, if it, especially if it has spaces. I purposely did this video where both the Source 2013 install and the Source mod folder had spaces in it. So I simply just copied and pasted everything out into a separate drive, pasted it back, and then that allows the changes to be made to make that directory adhere to the 8.3 directory format. So to see if a change has actually been applied and if I've actually outlined and you know done a good job explaining this to you, then you can do CD and then path to your mod or CD path to the source 2013 install directory. And if applicable, do CD and then the drive letter followed by a colon. That way it actually switches to that drive if you're not on the C drive, of course. And then you can do a command such as 4% F in and then in brackets and then in speech marks and then in percent symbols CD. And then after that, do at echo percent tilde SF. Now, if this has been changed successfully, that function will return a path with tildes in it. So in my case, you'll see something along the lines of S colon single tilde one game mod HL2 as the game DIR directory. And then G colon steam L tilde one steam a tilde one common source tilde two slash bin so as you'll see in the video but that's what the stk bin dir would be um so if that has worked then you should get a file path that looks kind of like that and finally the last thing you would want to do is edit the build stk shaders.bat file and there is a line that says something like percent vs 100 common tools percent and you just want to change the 100 to a 120 because that's going to be targeting the Visual Studio 2013 or at least Visual Studio 2013 set of tools. So that's just a necessary change. And then at this point, you can run the build hl2 shaders.bat, build episodic shaders.bat or build hl2 mp shaders.bat, dependent on the situation for your mod. And assuming that you have shaders to compile, You've added them to the STD Shader DX920B.txt and or the STD Shader DX930.txt files, then everything should work perfectly fine. And there's already some stock shaders in the STD Shader DX920B.txt file. That would probably be a good place to start to see if this ends up working and if you have any issues or anything like that. But if it ends up doing the compilation of the shaders, then it means this has worked. So now I need to go over a couple of limitations, the disadvantages that I mentioned earlier with this method. So first of all, you will encounter errors about D3D vertex texture sampler zero being undefined. However, from what the Valve Developer Wiki article for this says is that a fix for this is to remove any references to this from the register functions in the vertex shader files if the shader you wish to compile has this in it somewhere. And another thing as well is that this version of the shader compiler tool, it won't compile any pixel shader files below version 2.0b and it won't compile any vertex shader files below version 2.0. Now some of the stock SDK shaders do rely on fallback versions. I would assume for anyone who's running their game on DirectX 8 for example and if you are looking to compile shaders that do need a older version you probably won't be able to use this version of the shader compile tool so there's something you'd have to investigate on that front um, but again for some shaders they don't have any of these fallback versions so 
For the example, the next tutorial I wish to use, which is adding a dynamic sky shader to your mod. That is one that doesn't use a fallback version, so this method of shader compilation is just perfectly fine. And with that being said and done everyone, I think that is all I need to say about how to be in a position to compile shaders using SL555's version of the shader compile tool. Again, big ups, thank you and shout out to that individual for allowing this video to be possible. And hopefully you found this helpful. Let me know if you have any suggestions, criticisms, issues with this in the comment section down below. And the next video is going to be about how to add a dynamic sky shader to your mod. And hopefully you will check that out. So have a great day. Peace out. Take care and see you later.